Hello all and welcome back to Arc 1 Welding. My name's Calvin and you join me on the same. Yep, back back to the, my roots where I'm showing you lot my pipe welding fabrication techniques. And on the chopping blocks today is some seamless 3 inch shed 40 pipe work. That is a mouthful. Yes, I'm doing, I believe these are some valve sets, some 3 inch valve sets, shed 40 pipe, so it's annoying to weld, I don't like these types of pipes, I'm normally doing shed 20 pipe, which is red pipe, way easier to weld, takes so much less heat, so much lighter, so much more thinner, and um, yeah, I don't have to clean it, in this case here, all of the prep that you see is done by me. So, let's quickly get into the video. What you've just seen me do is use my bench for the purposes of tacking. A lot of people waste time putting things in the vise. You spend so long putting a T in the vise, leveling it off, only to tack one pipe to it. I don't waste that time. I'm, I'm, I'm a mass production type of guy. This pipe work is usually classed as medium temp hot water so it's going to have an operating pressure of, of no more than six bar i believe any anywhere around that range so the welding class specifications is class two and that is a very relaxed specification so i'm going to weld it on my turning stuff this here is the one I use for elbows. I do not need that, so I'll take it out. Store it on the side. And then grab this one here. There we go. Now, I have a rotatable surface. That it doesn't it doesn't arc burn through here and I've also done my x-ray weld test on this and it doesn't affect the pulse capabilities of the Fronia. I'm gonna be welding with okay some ESAP OK wire copper free with universal argon. 12% CO2. My root setting. This will be my root setting. The wire. I don't particularly like the wire too much, so I have to have quite a high arc length to stop it from um, dipping too much, if that makes sense. It's like I like a, a nice wide root arc. And then for my cap. Here will be my cat. 166 abs. Quite low, quite mild. Welding on pulse. So yeah. Anytime you see me do these welds, what I do, I grind down my uh, start stop because they're the only parts that really and truly need touching up. If you can see the side wall, there's nice fusion on the sides. So I tend not to grind it only because it's a class 2 weld. If it's a class 1 or x-ray or anything, that's a different story. But if you look at this one here, this is one that's been ground down and you can see how clean the sides are and there's nothing to really worry about when it comes down to what you're leaving in the weld um, if you don't grind it. So this is, this is not grout, grout down and this one here is grout down and you can see just grinding down the edges you 
can see how good the edges are and that's the only reason why you really grind it down to make sure the edges are good so i trust my edges are good here so in the aspect of saving time i don't grind and it also when you grind too much material weight it affects your cap but what i will do is grind down the start stop just because obviously why not from my understanding of class 2 welding i learned this in college you can basically miss 25 mil of root penetration per 100 mil of weld now i don't know if that's one of them rumors that go around but it's it's a low spec basically although i definitely weld above that spec this here isn't welded to x-ray specifications because the pipe work isn't needed for that it's 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 only going to go i don't know in a data center in a plant room anywhere where just it needs to transport cold water which is why mig welding is used on it even though you can mig weld on all kind of quality work you know mig welding definitely is is the way of the future when it comes to mass production in factories take this three inch cap for example it's welded at i believe 177 amps and i weld the cap in one minute and the root won't have taken more than a minute so you can bang through tens of pipe tens of butt welds a day very easily um on this like when i when i've got a bunch of jobs i'm doing two of these in the morning there's times when i could be doing eight of them in the day you know 12 of them in the day if if need be 12 is a rush probably couldn't do 12 but eight more than more than likely could just bang them out in a day so it's a ton of welding so i've got my first two t pieces welded out of the way they're still on the captain's wheel now cooling down as i'm tacking these next pieces i'm on price work so i only get paid once this job is done each one of these size welds and type of weld has its own fee and it's plussed up together at the end to create the the price of the drawing so i'm trying to work as fast as and as efficient as i possibly can that's why some of the some of the techniques i do such as this which is going to be tacking on the inside of the pipe i've been told you can do it and when i do tack on the inside of the pipe i'm able to melt the tack away and i find it easier because then i can obviously do the inside here and then the outside the reason why i do the inside because it's naturally going to sh um, shrink and then i can counter react the shrinkage with this hammer right now to um, keep everything level if i was to tack on the top which i'll do in on the next tee, if i tack on the top then it's just going to shrink and pull the the pipe upwards and making it pissed which you know it's undesirable it's just going to waste time trying to straighten it off after you can see the how much penetration i get from the tacks from welding the inside to the outside you can see it penetrated nicely so this method of fabrication on the table does come with drawbacks and that is if your pipe isn't exactly the same size as your fittings you have gaps the T is perfectly on the table and the pipe is ever so slightly floating one mil in the air for me that is not an issue but there are cases where the gap is bigger and sometimes you split the difference i put down maybe a little shim or something just to split the difference because yeah i i hate using the vice i really don't like using the vice here's a little quick tip and a tool that i've got two bits of angle little small pieces i think like 20 by 20 angle and it just sets over things and um you don't have to put it on bolts so you can you know go over the weld you want you want to take an average across a longer length rather than taking the measurement of just the t or the fitting because things naturally become pissed as you're rushing to fabricate it or just it happens here you can see bubbles well out because i need to weld the backside it's going to shrink so that's a bit of preventative shrinking measures taken there this was one way of making it with the elbow up in the air and on the other one i'm going to do it a different technique i'll show you that where i have the t in the air now if i had more than two of these to do out of that quick little test i would know which one i prefer to do and moving forward i would continue continuously use that method I'm forever trying to test my skills and learn the fastest way to fabricate things because the faster you fabricate 
the more money you make in this place here where i work there there are no caps on how much money you can make it's all down to your speed so efficiency and obviously quality because your work comes back to you if it's you know not good is is key and you pick up li little things such as this this little piece to to you know lift your pipe up so the vice teeth bite it nicely so it clamps in a lot easier things like that it's just yeah you, you learn you learn these things over the years so I've made enough of these to know that I can pull out the flanges 16 mil and that's enough to get the measurements. I should, as I was on my previous one, get the straight edge of measuring to get the right measurements, but there's a 3 mil tolerance on left and uh, yeah, I've made enough of them. I know not to worry, 16 mil. And it's gonna save me about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes overall making the two of these. But so far, since starting, this has taken around 30 minutes from first initially welding and fabricating and getting to this stage. It's only been like 30 minutes. This is definitely one that's going to trigger some of you lot. Tacking flanges onto pipe that needs to be welded. Yep, I've seen the comments. You lot absolutely hate it. I refer back to what I've been saying throughout the whole video speed and efficiency. I know I've got good tacks, my tacks aren't going to pull. I know where to weld to try to compensate any pulling that would happen and I know the limits, how many butt welds I can get away with without having to worry about things pulling pissed. In this case here, everything really and truly is going to shrink on the inside of the elbow. So on the small radius of the elbow will shrink and pull everything in i don't compensate for it on this i just make sure that i start with everything as bang on on the mark as possible so um if it does pull it still pulls within level i crush my finger right about now it doesn't look like much but i lean my weight on the on the handle to you know close it and it caught right on the now that had like no defense you know the soft part at the top it caught right there and i um yeah my body I, I didn't see it happen so my body was reacting the same way how it would react if if i also got my my finger caught in in a um a wood chipper it just sh sent a shock right through my body i know it weren't too bad because two days later it doesn't throb and it and it weren't no blood blisters but yeah that was absolutely painful so I put on the flange, then I use the hammer to level off the other two flanges. So obviously, I don't have to re-level it to put the flange on again. If I was to do it the opposite way around, hit the, ha hit the flanges, now the pipe ain't level. Now I need to re-level it to put the last flange on. It's all these little things. Even the way how it was put into the vise was put in a vise where I'd done minimal turns. No wasted turns. And um, I was able to, you know hang all three flanges on with three flips if you're able to tack onto the pipe tack onto the pipe if you're not able to tack onto the pipe go but i don't want to hear in the comments criticizing anything that i've done because i've tacked onto the pipe here this pipe here right now it can be tacked onto it so i don't want to hear nothing And then just like that, because of this, the pipe is counterbalanced. You see that? The pipe is counterbalanced. I can use one finger to rotate the pipe. So now I can fully weld this up nice and easy all the way around. And then what I'm gonna have to do, there's a socket that's 120 mil. So I have to put a socket here, but I'll do that after. You may ask, how does the welds come out with tacks on it? Pretty nice. I would say pretty damn nice. Same with this one. It's not as good. You can see obviously there, but that's still, it's still fused both sides of the tack.
I do promise one day I will make a high quality detailed video of how to MIG weld pipe. I've got I've got an old one down in my um, old videos, but it's, it's it's outdated now. But I try to avoid doing um, I try to avoid doing welding videos, and I stick to the fabrication because there's plenty of welding videos out there, and there's a minimal amount of fabrication, especially the UK style of fabrication. Because no offense to a lot of you guys in America, you don't need six people to tack stuff together man and I don't want to hear nothing about unions we don't have unions in the UK like that at least I don't think we do so yeah I'm not trying to save the fabrication job for another bloke to come in and do it in the UK welding fabricating is pretty standard for at least the circle that I roll in everyone really and truly fabricates and welds and the guys that don't fabricate and weld times move on and they get stuck in a situation where they can't fabricate they can only weld so i'm glad i can do it all yes so now that's cleared up i'm gonna preemptively answer a question so the welding mask that i'm using is a speed glass g501 it's an air fed respirator keeps my lungs nice and healthy the thing on my hip is the respirator that you know pumps filtered air into my mask um the extractor, I'm using extractor fan as well because UK law or, or European law, you you need respirator, you need respirators for the welders and you need um, local extractors for obviously the rest of the work workers in the workplace. There's that quick socket going on. These are weldable sockets, boys. I know a lot of you lot think they're thread protectors. No, these can hold up to 40 bar of pressure so um, yeah another thing that you lot may not know about up to 40 bar of pressure on these and you can see how I'm absolutely nuking this which is why obviously I'm not cleaning it the way I probably should but do you really need to when look at the color look at that glow there is some serious heat in that everything's fused together nicely So they are finished, nothing special, just sorted. The welding, I weren't trying to do anything good. All class two, everything. The time it took, the time now is, uh, where is that? I think I started at 19.19. Around two hours, but I wasted time obviously with cameras and getting distracted by other stuff. So this is just, if I was, if this, if there was a lorry waiting for this outside, probably an hour and a half worth of work right here. Uh, I'm gonna move on to the next, the next job. A bit of bonus footage. I finished the next pipe. A bit of 12 inch shed 40 with a three inch branch. Ah, nothing special. Three inch branch. And the socket. And the next drawer is done. And the time is what time is it? The time is 12 o'clock. So these are the final pipes of the day. It's been a bit of a busy one. No, it hasn't really. This is about average. This is about an average day of the amount of work that I produce. Obviously everything welding and fabricating. I'm gonna spend the final hours of the day welding up all of this crap But yeah no. Was working on some shed 20 this time, which I like a lot. I like a lot more than the shed 40 seamless Six inch hockey stick six inch hockey stick and a dome cap T hockey stick piece 